Recording in progress has begun. Okay, so uh, we are now recording. Um, and let me just, I'm looking to see if we have Jen joining us yet. I don't see her. We'll, we'll go ahead and call to order and um, we'll just note the time that she joins us. Um, all right, so we'll call to order this special meeting of the Easton Board of Education, August 18th, 2021 at 7.02 p.m. Members in attendance, Jenny Cheetah, Randy Hicks, Jeff Parker, Demi Weibel, myself, John Stinson, um, and sorry for the folks, uh, for my, my uh, helpers who are uh, letting people in. Did, did Jen join yet? Seen her yet. Okay. We, is there a way to turn off the ding ding? There is. There, there absolutely is. Um, and I super know how to do that. I just need a moment. It's under the participant window and it is play sound when someone joins and I just disabled it on mine. And uh, if you go to your participants window, if it's still dinging for you, you can, you can do that there. Good. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen um, for tonight's meeting. The intent, uh, the intent is that we're we're going to use this a lot because we we've got a lot of different, um, you know, sort of sections we want to get through. We want to make sure we're super organized. Make sure that we're we're sort of getting through the content as as, as efficiently as possible. So thanks everyone for for joining. We'll start um, just looking at the agenda. We're going to obviously we've called to order already. We'll we'll have public comment. Then we'll do the board member comment. We have, um, I think, limited reporting as this is our sort of special meeting for August, which, uh, you know, it's it's actually pretty common in August that we wouldn't meet. Um, I think we're going to try to sort of change that in the future and, and really try to build up our August meeting as a, as a sort of meaningful way to um, just sort of touch base ahead of the, the school year starting. Um, but we, we will hear uh, a little bit, I'm sure, from, from uh, Dr. McWarren and Dr. Pearson Eagle. Um, and then we'll jump into discussion and possible action. We've got a couple of items, the approval uh, of change in authorized signer, a sort of administrative item that we didn't take care of um, when we appointed Dr. McMorrin, and we're, we're just making sure that we have that um, lined up. And then we have the ratification of the Easton Support Staff Collective Bargaining Agreement uh, with the BOE, which um, I'll ask Jeff and Randy to speak to. Uh, and then we'll jump into um, a little bit of sort of internal discussions, you know, things that that um, are good to uh, touch base on, um, you know, every every so often, probably probably once a year, we come back, touch on these items. This is actually meant to be a sort of opening, um, you know, salvo in that in that work, and that we would come back and and do sort of deeper discussions on these topics and overall board governance in subsequent meetings. And then we'll wrap up with our uh, typical sort of public comment, board member comment, and then adjournment. So um, with that uh, overview of the agenda, we'll jump into public comment. As usual, um, if anyone would like to make public comment, they should please raise their uh, hand using the participant window. You should be able to uh, show the participant window and, um, and indicate that you'd like to, to, uh, to speak by way of uh, clicking the, the raise hand feature there. Um, please make sure that when you do speak, if you speak, that uh, you, you state your full name, uh, street and town. Um, please keep in mind to keep uh, comments to under three minutes. Please make sure that you're focused on Easton's educational interests. Um, please do not target individual district personnel and please, as always, express uh, your comments in, in a civil manner. All right, I'll just look look at the list, see if I find anyone who's raised their hand. Very good. Seeing none, I'll move to board member comment. Any comments from members of the board? You, John, can we exit the screen now that we've gone through the... Yeah, and we're going to use it throughout. Um, so I'll, I'll just sort of arrange this so that it's easier to see, and I'll, I'll just sort of stop the share and then restart it so we can yeah, come back to it. But I think that was maybe Jeff's line. Um, so we'll stop and then we'll go back and forth. So yes, Jenny. Well, yeah, I mean, as needed, I, I love seeing the agenda, you know, and the organization, but it definitely limits our ability to kind of be together as a group. What if the screen shares on for a a large amount of time. Sorry, just letting Lara in. Did anybody else have comment before? I, I think Jeff. Jeff had comment. I have. I have one, but Jenny, go ahead. Um, welcome back, Dr. McMorrin. 
Um, thanks for being with us for this period of time. Really glad to see you and I really appreciated all of the communication and I hope the community has too, um, all of the updates. I, you know, with without administrators here, I'm not sure how much of this we can talk about, but I'm sure uh, Tom and Stephanie, you can speak to it maybe later during um, administrative reports, but I'm definitely concerned about the year. I think not necessarily for the re same reasons that everybody else is. Um, you know, nothing we can do about the the masking mandate, obviously through September 30th, and and probably need to be prepared that that you know may be extended for for quite a while beyond that. Um, totally unknown at this point. But I'm just thinking back to things about last year that I was really relieved were not going to be extended beyond that. So I'm I'm curious to know how some of the mitigation strategies are gonna be in the elementary school in particular. Like I'm thinking about, you know, kindergarten last year where kids were in single rows, spaced out from other students, um, didn't share materials, only faced in one direction, didn't sit together, uh, grouped at tables at all. They, you know, that whole socialization and play piece, um, especially of early childhood that is so, so important to their learning um, that really was kind of stripped you know, out of school last year in large part, you know, kids not going to the cafeteria, not moving about the building, seeing other students, you know, all of those things that are maybe small and subtle, but, you know, a kindergartner is seeing their brother or sister in the hallway on the way to the cafeteria or just sort of an awareness of the older students in the building and kind of that succession up through the grades, you know, to everything from lining up, going to the art room, cleaning up your materials, coming back to class. There are so many pieces of early childhood education that kids didn't experience last year. And I'm concerned about how it's affecting their, um, some, not all students, but their, their view and their the positivity towards school. Um, and also concerned about masks and how that affects uh, speech and language development, which directly impacts reading. So I just would like, to maybe get sort of an update on where we are this year and how much of that is going to be the same as last year or if, if any other solutions or ideas or, or things are in place. Um, so I'm sorry that was a little bit long, but that's definitely been on my mind. Um, oh, and I just wanted to mention there's an awful lot of consternation I hear in the community about lockers at the middle school. Um, so if maybe we could take a minute to talk about that tonight too, it might be helpful. Thank you. Good, any other uh, board member comment? Yes, Jeff. Today, each board member received at 3.54 in the afternoon, a review of our attorneys, um, which is Shipman and Goodwin, the statutory changes affecting students for the upcoming year. It's a 25 page document that I scanned before this meeting and didn't see any law or even any uh, direction surrounding our children wearing masks in, in school. I found this odd given the governor's executive order 13A where he tells us that all students need to wear masks unless they have a medical reason, an IEP or a 504 plan that specifically says that the child does not have to wear a mask in school. I realize this is not an agenda item and therefore uh, cannot be an item for, uh, up for discussion, but I think it would be in our collective best interest to seek a legal opinion from our attorneys at Shipman and Goodwin about the efficacy of the Executive Order 13A. I think it would benefit all of us and provide uh, greater clarity on this topic. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Any additional uh, board member comment? Yes, Randy. Um, <clears throat> just uh, Jen reminded me, frankly, um, schedules last year at the middle school changed a couple of times. Um, just curious, I'm sure the parents will be curious what that schedule looks like starting in September. Thank you, Randy. Any additional board member comment? Okay, we'll move to uh, four administrative reports. Tom, Stephanie, anything you'd like to add or, or perhaps even just giving a, an idea of, you know, sort of, um, estimates for when we would likely hear about some of the some of the different items that Randy, Jeff, Jenny, um, and Sir, I'm sure certain members of the community have have expressed an interest in hearing more information about. Uh, yes, let me let me start. Good evening. Uh, I am uh, 
I'm, I'm, you know, very pleased to be able to be back with you for a brief amount of time as you uh, determine who your new uh, permanent superintendent will be. Um, can I uh, start by just reminding the board that I'm a storyteller and I don't always talk in, in straight facts. I, I'm going to tell you a story and just so no one misunderstands me, the purpose of my story is to, is to reiterate how the good people in Easton uh, generally get along with each other and, uh, and you give each other a lot of room and, and you're good neighbors. Um, and the story I wanted to say is I have passed through the intersection of Sport Hill Road and Stepney literally hundreds of times. It's a, an intersection you all know. There's no traffic light there. There's no cop to say who goes first. And the way we get through that intersection is that Everybody in the car takes their turn and signals each other. And, and often what you get into is the, is the other person saying, no, you go first. No, you go first. And somehow we all get through it. People don't go barreling through that intersection at 70 miles an hour and say to hell with everybody else. That is simply not the Easton way. Uh, Easton people are good neighbors and they, uh, they, they, they gesticulate with each other when you're in the cars. And I, I think we can do this in other places also. Uh, this week, this Friday, I, I think the community can expect that the building administrators will be communicating with the uh, parents and guardians and families in their towns, uh, sharing more of the plans for uh, reopening the schools. Um, at the moment, uh, we are under the direction of the governor of Connecticut under executive order 13A. And I'm going to just come right out and tell you, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to parse the language of the governor. Uh, the directives are that we begin the year with students wearing masks. I am highly sympathetic, highly sympathetic to people who are thinking about our youngest kids and the impact of those kids wearing masks. But the direction from the uh, governor of Connecticut in conjunction with the State Department of Education and the Department of Public Health and our own local uh, folks is that uh, people coming into the schools uh, are required to wear masks. Now there are exceptions and uh, those are laid out in communications from the governor, including uh, um, Executive Order 13A about uh, the folks who would be um, exempt from, from that mask wearing. Um, but again, I'm not going to interpret or parse that. I'm going to observe the directions under which uh, the local districts are uh, compelled to act. And, uh, and I do encourage people to read those, uh, those executive orders and the press le releases and to go on to um, other, the sites that the state is, is providing to help us make good decisions about how to keep our, our students and our staff healthy and safe. What I will not tell you, because I cannot tell you, is the condition of members of our staff or our community or our students uh, that are private, that are protected in their, their conditions. Uh, we do have people in the staff who have fragile or medical or personal issues that, uh, that, that make it necessary for them to be protected. And as good neighbors, as good folks at Easton, I, we're, we have to start the year uh, in observance of that. I, am, I totally get it. I have two child, children of my own. They're adults now, but they used to be little kids. And I am, I'm really, I, you don't have to convince me that uh, the impact of masking on very young children is a serious issue that needs our, our careful care and attention. Um, but at the same time, we are working under the uh, directions of the state, and, and that's where we are at the moment. How will things develop? Um, I don't know. I do know that through September 30th, the expectation is that we begin the year with uh, students, staff, uh, visitors with purpose in, in the building uh, to wear masks. Uh, there's been uh, a, a lot of conversation, a lot of planning. Um, some folks are saying, why aren't you communicating with us on a more regular basis? Uh, because we wanna make sure that we are coordinating all of our communications with you 
with our local health coordinators, our local health experts, um, the directions that we're receiving, our nurse coordinator, our administrators, there's lots of conversation going on. And I'm, I'm very sympathetic to those who, who want to know more sooner and faster, but we do want to make an effort to make sure that we are compliant and safe and, uh, and doing those things that are going to make sure that the, the boys and girls in this town and the people who work for them are, are cared for. Now, I'm joining this conversation just 20 days in and have spent a lot of my time trying to make sure that we have all of the teachers and paraprofessionals and administrators and support staff. So that's where my energy is going, is filling your staffing needs. And uh, Dr. Pearson Ugal has been here with you, as you know, and I'll, um, I'll turn over to her any, anything else she wants to say about our, our reopening. You will get communication from all of our building administrators starting this Friday and going forward. Thank you, John. St uh, Dr. Pearson, you go. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Well, I think that I can say uh, with complete sincerity that we all share in the desire to come back to a time when life at school felt a little bit more normal. There are gonna be many things this year that feel more familiar. And I'm very pleased to share that the schedules will look much more typical. So Helen Keller will really revert back to its regular schedule. Um, and at Samuel Staples, there will be a number of things in place that will feel more typical. So that will include students will be able to go to their special area classes as opposed to having people push in. There will be um, more regular movement through the hallways. The distancing uh, in the classrooms will be um, less restrictive than it was last year. Yes, you've already heard about the masks, but we are trying to balance the uh, mitigation strategies with some of the experiences that we know that we hold so dear. So that will include uh, reinstating some after school activities, clubs when that's available, extracurriculars, um, inviting volunteers into our buildings once again, as long as they are not gathering in large groups. So we are really trying so hard to balance the health and safety of our students, our staff and our families with the very important need to have a focus on our core, on the academics of taking care of one another and uh, growing our children in the best way that we can. So as Dr. McMorrin said, you will receive a lot more detail on Friday from the building administrators. Um, and some of that I hope will be, a, will be pleasant news, things that are coming back, things that were familiar. Um, with some additional information. The buses will continue to include assigned seating, windows open to increase ventilation, you know, a number of, number of mitigation strategies to just ensure health and safety. But again, hoping that we can um, begin the year with, with great optimism and a refocus on uh, who we are as a district. Thank you. Any questions from the board for Dr. McMorrin or Dr. Pearson Ugal? John, I just wanted to say Please. a quick, just to thank you for, for the update. And I certainly didn't want, I hope that my um, comment at the beginning didn't come across as, as questioning the mask mandate. I just simply was curious about some of, you know, what, what things were going to look like, um, you know, and, and how they're going to be going back um, under those circumstances. So thank you. And I'm sure everybody's really looking forward to more information from the administrator. So that's great. Uh, uh, if I could just respond to that, uh, Jenny, thank you for the questions. I, it's, it's questions that are out there in the public. Um, what, I, what I want us all to do is, is begin all of our thinking with the shared core belief. Why are we doing all these things together? It's because all of us care about the well-being of our children and the people who work for them. And maybe there's some differences on how to go about achieving that, but but uh, we should start every conversation with all of us want to make sure we're doing what we all believe is best for our kids. Uh, and then as a public entity, we are guided by 
the expectations or the the uh, the uh, what's put on us by the state, by the governor, by the Department of Public Health, by the Department of Education. I, I just I urge us all to just recognize there's no there's there's no there's no opposite sides on this. They're just people who love their children, and we all want that to be uh, what we're talking about. And surely we can have differences of opinions on how to go about doing that, but still all respect each other and, and where we're coming from. So thank you for raising the questions. John, just to Please. close the loop, is, uh, do we think the middle school schedule will be as it was at the end of the year or, we, or will it go back to original or are we still in between? No, it, it will go back to what it was uh, two years ago for the most part. Right, yeah. so any slight adjustment would just be um, accounting for additional time that it might take students to come in not knowing how many parents will be driving their students. But other than that, the academic schedule will, will revert back to um, what's typical in terms of the number of minutes per period. Great. And, and we'll get more detail from Dr. Clapp on Friday for Helen Keller and from uh, Mrs. Fox Santora on Friday as well for SSCS. That's correct. Great, okay. Um, thank you very much. And, and not just, I know, um, Stephanie, Tom, you, you obviously you've put in a ton of time on this, but I know the nurses, I know that, you know, there's a whole group of people, please, you know, relay our thanks to all the hard work that they've done to make sure that we can open in as normal a way as possible. All right. Um, thank you. Um, uh, not to, um, make you feel unwanted, Dr. Pearson, you all, but um, don't feel obliged to stay for the rest. Uh, it's um, you know certainly your prerogative too if if you like, but uh, you know our feelings won't be hurt if you want to get onto your evening. Um, Tom, you're stuck with us because um, just you know we can't can't do this without you. you we need you here. No. <laughs> All right, so we are moving on to uh, number five on the agenda: discussion and possible action. Um, starting with five A, the approval of uh, change in authorized signer. Uh, of the ED-099 agreement for the child nutrition program. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion uh, uh, that the Eastern Board of Education approve to change the authorized signer of the ED-099 uh, agreement for child nutrition program to Dr. Thomas McMorrin, superintendent, effective immediately. Do I hear that motion? Uh, Devin and Randy? Second. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, discussion. This should be a fairly pro forma thing. So, all right. Um, hearing none, I'll call the question. Um, I, I am going to ask if everyone can just say their name and then yes, it's a part of making sure that we're doing this in exactly the right way. So if you can just say your full name and then uh, your vote. Um, we'll start with Jenny. Uh, Jenny Cheetah, yes. Thank you. Jeff? Jeff Parker, yes. Thank you. Devin? Devin Weibel, yes. Thank you. Uh, Jen? Jennifer DeJesus, yes. Thank you. Randy? Randy Hicks, yes. Thank you. John Stinson, I vote yes. The motion carries uh, unanimously. Thanks, everybody. All right. That takes us to 5B, the ratification of the Easton Support Staff Collective Bargaining Agreement with the Board of Education. I'll um, see if we can get the motion uh, moved and seconded, and then I, I would expect that Jeff and Randy, you'd want to give some context. So we'll look for a motion uh, that the Easton Board of Education accept the recommendation of the negotiating committee and ratify the Easton Support Staff Collective Bargaining Agreement. Do I hear that motion? So moved. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, and Devin is seconding. So very good. And uh, discussion. And I'll, I'll turn it to you, uh, Jeff and Randy, to talk to us a little bit about um, any of the, the meaningful details that we should be mindful of. Randy, you want to take a swing? Uh, not unless you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> it, I am I am fine too, but as but as uh, it was a it was a dual effort. I I certainly want to give you a chance to to, to speak to it. I'll be your Laurel if you'll be my Hardy. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's great. <laughs> Take it away. Okay, um, we had a we we had a we had three very uh, productive meetings with the um, uh, with the Eastern Support staff and uh, their representative. Um, I explained to to the to the paraprofessionals that uh, that were there that 
that uh, our board uh, considered them the glue that held uh, that, that helps to hold the school together that their that, that their value cannot be measured in just in just simple dollars and cents and and thank you really doesn't seem to be enough um, but it was a it was a very uh, productive conversation. We we came to a, a fairly easy agreement on on pay increases for the next three years, as well as um, as well as all of the um, the health uh, the health uh, and, and insurance information. So I think it was uh, I think it was probably as smooth a negotiation as I've had, and as that we've had as a board for 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 quite some time. Randy. Yeah, I would agree. It's a terrific group. Um, uh, they are the, the, the big toe of our foot and um, they're essential. Um, and, you know, we, we worked on some things to help them to help us, I think, in, in addition to the economic side of it, um, which was very straightforward. So. Great. Thank you, Randy. All right. Um, any, any discussion? Any, anything else that anyone wants to touch on? Okay. And Randy for leading that and making it so successful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's let's call the question. Um, we'll we'll start again with Jenny. Jenny Cheeto, yes. Thank you. And everybody just moved around on my screen, so I apologize. I'm just going to go counterclockwise again. Randy. Randy Hicks, yes. Thank you, Jen. For De Jesus, yes. Thank you, Devin. Devin Weibold, yes. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff Parker, yes. Thank you, John Stinson. Also votes yes. The measure, the uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you uh, very much, everyone. And and uh, I should note, um, as board chair, I would generally be on these conversations. I was dealing with a bit of a rough patch uh, personally, and Jeff and Randy dove straight in and needed none of my uh, meddling. They, they made it happen in a, in a really clean way where all, all parties were happy. And I just, I just wanted to express my gratitude. So thank you. Welcome. Okay, uh, moving on, sorry, uh, to C, uh, board governance. So um, this meeting was originally imagined as a sort of in-person session. We're definitely gonna do that. Uh, I hope our September meeting, we're all gonna be in person and, and we're, we're gonna be able to, to be there at the Helen Keller Media Center. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, the, you know, sort of when we when we think about um, what's generally known as a board retreat, it tends to be something that's happening on a on a on a weekend. Uh, it tends to be a, a like a four hour meeting. It's ten. It tends to be much more casual. Members of the public, as all all of our meetings, except for very special circumstances, are able to join. But generally, it's hey, we're just talking about you know, board operations and things like that. You don't generally get people um, from the public showing up. But um, you know, so my goal here is not for us to try to do that here on this, um, this Zoom session because I don't think it would be uh, really you know, very productive. But I, I would like to um, just sort of tease out some of these items, give sort of lay the foundation for the types of things that we would talk about, get people's sort of minds moving on these things. And then I hope that we'll be able to find either an evening or a weekend sometime in the next couple of months where we can actually do this, this kind of work together and, and have really frank and open conversations with each other. And, you know, people can, can point at me and say, you know, you stink at this. And I can say, you're right, I do. And I'll try to do better. <laughs> um, but I know it's, it's hard for people to do that on a Zoom session. So um, I want to, I want to just start by laying out so the core topics here, not to say that this is sort of everything that would fall into this bucket of board governance. I think there are many, many other topics you could touch on, but I think these are uh, particularly um, sort of timely and, and relevant given our work to, to find a new superintendent. So I'm just gonna dive in on a couple of these and you'll notice the first two are actually, these are straight from our bylaws. So um, bylaw 90 uh, or policy 9040, um, it, it's essentially eight um, items that starts with, and it's all about the board's responsibilities. This is where our policy actually dictates, here's what the board's responsibilities are. And you know, it goes from simple things like connecting with the community and making sure that we're faithfully representing the, the um, sort of needs of our community to identifying educational needs and aspirations of the community, and then translating that into leadership that helps us to connect with central office and, and to help drive what we're 
you know, what, what we're actually trying to do, and what our vision is uh, for the district. To employ, this is actually one of our core uh, responsibilities laid out here to employ a capable superintendent. And uh, I know we're all very, um, very focused on that work right now. Um, to formulate policies, um, policy is a, a major refrain um, as we look through, whether it's bylaws or we look through the statutory requirements um, from the state about what a board of education is meant to do, it, it's probably the, the sort of most prevalent item that people will, uh, that, that's mentioned in, in the laws that a board of education is charged with and that it, that is uh, formulating policy um, and then, you know, sort of the, the governance of making sure that it's being carried out um, properly by way of the communication with the superintendent. Um, developing data and uh, to plan and evaluate and organize our work. Um, and then to make sure that all of the, the ways in which we operate are in, in conformity with state, uh, local and, and federal law. And, um, and then to evaluate our performance and to, to sort of be honest and reflective, introspective about how well we're doing at these things. As we think about the, the sort of second item that is the sort of operations, um, the operation side of things, um, this is another uh, bylaw, it's 9300, and, and this bylaw basically says the board doesn't have a role to play in day-to-day -day operations. Um, in fact, it is the superintendent um, who, who's sort of charged with that. So the Board of Education shall concern itself only with the broad questions of policy and not with administrative details. The board shall rely upon the superintendent of schools to recommend policies for adoption and to administer policies enacted by the board. Such policies shall be broad enough to indicate a line of action to be taken by the superintendent in a meeting, uh, in meeting a number of problems and jobs. Applications, uh, application of such policies to individual problems and jobs is an administrative function to be performed by the superintendent. So I'm going to I'm going to pause there just for a second because I do want to talk a little bit more about the the superintendent and and sort of all that. But I want to pause and just sort of give, give a, a moment either for Dr. McWarren to, to join in or any of the board members to join in and um, you know, react if you have any reactions to the last couple of slides here. We, it seems, seems clear and sort of we have a sense. Yes, Devin. No, I just think this is quite helpful. I think, um, I know Jen to Jesus is new. I was new a year ago. Um, and especially with COVID and meeting virtually and you know, kind of coming onto the board really quickly, just it's very helpful to understand kind of what the board's responsibility is. And then when it shifts over to the superintendent, the central office and the schools. So I appreciate the reminder. Yeah. yeah Jeff, please. Um, can you flip back to the first one? Absolutely. Okay, it says it says to work closely with, uh, with the community to ensure that the board's actions and performance reflect the concerns and aspirations of the community. Mm -hmm. And then, if we flip back to to your second in term in terms of the operation, it says uh, to concern itself only with broad questions of policy and not and not administrative details. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I certainly understand that the, the day to day work uh, needs needs to be done by the people. That um, that that the board hired to do the work, um, but how do we how how do we meld those those uh, th those two things uh, together? That we are uh, we are representing the uh, community, but we don't have um, you know we can't get our fingers in the pie, so to speak. Yeah, I think the reconciliation of of those two specific items mm -hmm. is, I think, where we end up getting ourselves into sort of tricky spots because yeah. sometimes it just seems obvious that we should be we should be a part of this but is that actually policy or is that you know are we sort of crossing the line some of those administrative details I, I would love to hear Tom your thoughts about the reconciliation of those two things and certainly any member of the board you know sort of and and this is actually this is a very typical way that a, a board retreat would work is somebody says wait a second how do we reconcile these two things and then we talk about it all right, so uh, just just remember that when it, it often happens that when I'm trying to be serious, people think I'm joking, and when I'm being facetious, people take me seriously. Uh, I I I, I want to first applaud this work. I think it's a very very difficult position to be a member of a board of education. No other uh, uh, public service voluntary 
duty takes as much time or or has as much emotions in it because we're talking about um, other people's money and other people's children. And I, I never forget that. Um, and uh, the, the not facetious part is you, you've all heard me tell you that I'm not a superintendent, I'm a mediocre intendant <laughs> because I never stopped being a classroom English teacher. And somehow I found myself step-by-step step coming into positions of leadership. And, and uh, what I've often found in, in Easton and Reading in particular is, is when people get upset with us, it seems to me that what, they've, that what their complaint is, you're not perfect. You said something in a way I didn't like. You took an action that I didn't approve of. You, you did something that wasn't perfect for me. And, and uh, the, that's why you have a board of education. Local, local control of education is the core of, of why we have boards. So you don't have uh, like in France, a uh, federal uh, uh, government uh, distant from, in, from the people. You have local people and, and, uh, and you're making decisions about your small community. It's a virtue in Easton to be a small town. And I, I think we often find ourselves adopting um, uh, positions that assume that we have 100,000 citizens and 40,000 kids when we're really a small town. And, and I do encourage people just to call each other that, that to, to talk neighbor to neighbor, that, that to, 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 uh, to stop in at Chrysler's or, or the deli and, 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 and speak with each other. The, the, the mission of, of the board is to advocate for the, for the well-being of all kids, regardless of all of the ways that people are divided. It's your job to be the advocates for the boys and girls, the children in, in the town. It's your job to ensure that, uh, that the budget is well-developed, is thoughtfully deployed, and, and all of the, that, that treasure, that you know, time, talent, and treasure of the community is, is put to good use. Uh, and it's your, God, it's your job to establish policies that guide us. And all of your policies are derived from Connecticut state law. It, it, the, the General Assembly passes uh, legislation and, and, and enacts statutes. That gets translated into policy and the policy should guide us. So I, I compliment and really, think you're doing good work in saying, let's get our policies aligned and up to date so that when we have disputes, we can, we can go to the policy. How should we approach these things? Um, in, the, uh, in, in my office, um, I have a copy of, of Tom Mooney's uh, Practical Guide to Connecticut School Law. It's in its ninth edition. It's almost 600 pages long. That's the very first, practical. <laughs> the it, first sure first, is. it sure is. Uh, and Tom Mooney is still a practicing lawyer in, uh, in Connecticut. Uh, his first edition uh, of that uh, practical guide to Connecticut school law was about 50 pages long. Mm. It, it is now a very complex um, undertaking to do anything at all in the public school system. It's governed by, uh, by, by Hartford, by regulations, by statute, by, by, uh, by the law. Um, so I think what ha happens in, in a small town such as ours, and I don't say this is bad, I think it's a virtue, is that the members of the board are people that people know. It's not like you're Miami-Dade County or Baltimore County, which has hundreds of thousands of kids. Sure. Uh, but I do think it's important that we, we, we get our barriers and our boundaries straight. What is the duty of the, the people you've hired to do the work? What is the duty of the board? And, uh, and your job is to set policy and then hold us accountable to it. And, and what I think happens, and I, and I actually don't want this to stop, is that uh, members of the board, your neighbors come over, they call you, they go, hey, I, you know, help me understand this. And I, I think what's important is that we set up ways for, uh, for you to redirect certain questions to the administrators and then to bring others into agenda items. And, um, and do you think that's the, the sort of the answer to Jeff's question of the reconciliation of advocacy and broad questions of policy, not with administrative detail, that you reconcile that by way of the proper routing of, of I, that I kind of communication? Big, I, I do, John. I think that's a big part of it. Hmm. Um, and I also think when we talk about the well-being of the public, uh, of, of, our, of the, the children we're, we're educating up to be Americans, that we should be having these dialogues 
and uh, and we should be finding ways that if everyone's a little dissatisfied with how we're doing something, that's probably the way to do it, uh, because because you have such a wide constituency. Um, so uh, the the discussions of at the board level, I think, should uh, you should you should consider in your reflections how do we take care of the business of operating the school system, an expensive entity so that you can feel confident that the, the monies you've invested are being sp spent properly and well to the betterment of our kids. And then how can you get your conversations onto curriculum, instruction, professional development, use of time, uh, the, big, the big conversations of how do we collectively raise the, the boys and girls in e Easton so they can be successful in, uh, in their adult lives and be good citizens. Hmm. Thank you. Randy. Yeah, I, I was, uh, what Tom just closed on was where I was headed, which was the summertime in the past has been a great time in the last two years, um, putting it aside, to have a big picture conversation at the board level. Um, and that sort of overplays the rest of the 10 months, if you will, when we're mired in minutia, frankly. Um, so, you know, big picture conversation that that we then share with the administration, they share theirs with ours and, and sort of that sets the tone. And then you get into the, the micromanagement every month. But the big, the, the second big takeaway for me going forward is, and we talk about this um, and we don't really do it, but is how do we shorten the demands on the administrator's time that, that we sort of burden them with? Um, and it's three boards, but we can only sort of affect ours at the moment. And maybe best practices will migrate um, but that's a big thing. And we really have to take that um, seriously this year. Zoom aside, it's a benefit and it's, and it's not because it makes these meetings easier to occur. Um, but you don't have to assemble, obviously, but yep. name it. Yeah, I, I, and I think just as an aside for the Zoom, like I think our regular board meetings and sort of regular business, ideally we're, we're in person, but especially for uh, committee meetings, it's very convenient. You know, the public can participate. Yep. You can jump on like literally being able to jump on a nine o'clock Friday morning call, be done in an hour and then sort of go on to, you know, sort of doing the real work, you know, the job you get paid for is very beneficial. Um, anyone else have anything? Yeah, Jen, please. Um, just to follow on to what Randy's saying, I fully agree with what Randy says. We need to take away value add requests and I don't have enough longevity on the board to know, but my suggestion would be is to reach out to those administrators and say, can you give us some examples of requests in the past that have been burdensome, time consuming, taking away from your everyday responsibilities? So when we come to have that conversation, we have some examples and input from the administration and we're not just making those decisions about what they feel is might be overly burdensome. Yeah, and uh, Jen, I think that's really interesting because I, I I started as soon as Tom, you know, sort of started talking about the the routing of things. I started thinking of a flowchart, and and I and and if we had the sort of the master flowchart that would help us to understand, like, hey, anything that comes in like this, that's got to go first to the teacher, then to the school leader, then possibly to you know to central office, and anything in this bucket. The, you know, these are the things that are appropriate to send to the, the, the board chair or these, you know, like, like really, really figuring out what is the, 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 the correct flow of the or, or routing of those requests. Okay, cool. We're talking about operational routing and yeah, that's, I mean, really exciting stuff. So, all right. Um, all right. So, so, and, and sort of along those lines, sort of the, the, the topic of connectivity with district employees, you know, this, this gets really um, sort of tricky very, very quickly when we sort of start going to building leaders or start going to, you know, this teacher or that teacher. And so and what I wanted to, to think about, and, and, you know, I don't know how much, how deep we want to go into it today, but is, you know, the degree to which if we think about the superintendent's um, expectations, and, you know, if, if the superintendent is meeting these expectations, then like it, it's, it's my concept. I'm just going to, so this is the, the superintendent evaluation that, that is sort of, we, we sort of all agreed on amongst the three boards um, earlier sort of this year. And I think it's something that we intend to use with the superintendent. It's something that the, 
the uh, board members will be going through and, and sort of reviewing. And this is the these are the core uh, areas, right? So develops and implements vision that inspires action and commitment, develops and implements a district leadership theory of action, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we, I think you, you know, everyone, all the board members have seen this and we've talked about it multiple times. Um, but, you know, as we look at each one of these things and understand the degree to which success equals that they're, they're scoring high on each one of these categories, I think, you know, it's communication is oftentimes one of the issues, you know, the, we didn't know, and so we asked a question, and then we went to the the the, uh, the building leader. We and we're kind of breaking ranks because we 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 sort of didn't know the the sort of file we should be in, or didn't have that the sort of the information that we were sort of urgently looking to get. So um, I don't, you know, I don't expect that anybody is um, you know has a, a prepared statement to reply on this stuff. But but if anyone wants to touch on this, feel free. Okay. All right, and then um, John, I'm sorry, yeah. John. Can I sure. just, I, I, I often feel um, a conflict in uh, people who reach out to me in, in, in my position as superintendent, and they they get frustrated that they don't get a time what they consider to be a timely response. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you know, if you think of a superintendent's day, the workday is about eleven hours long. Um, there's there's time you put in on the weekend, and then the evening meetings. Um, but in our unique structure, two elementary schools, two middle school and a high school, if we were, I, I'm not advocating for this, I have no position on if you have one district or three, um, if we were a unified district, then uh, the superintendent would simply have more time to be responsive to, uh, to members of the community. Uh, because in any four weeks, uh, you're preparing for a board meeting on Tuesday night, uh, and then you're planning the following Tuesday to be a different board meeting. And then the Tuesday after that is another board meeting. Uh, so uh, part of your time budget is, is simply uh, diminished compared to um, say Brookfield or somewhere where, where, where the governance structure is, is not as, as large. I'm not saying you need to adopt a single board. I think you, you know, there, there are reasons why that's difficult to do. Uh, but um, it does mean that uh, that being able to execute these competencies is uh, is constrained in some ways, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I I think uh, each of the three boards deserves full vigorous support from the office of the superintendent and assistant superintendent. Uh, but there are time uh, time implications in serving three separate districts. Um, uh, some of them is simply as easy as we have we have to report to the state the ED0166 uh, um, audit of our of our um, of our finances and uh, that's three separate reports. It's not one report where you change the name three times and, and send it in. It's it's just that much more work. I just I, I, what I'm trying to get at is is as you consider the runway for your new superintendent. Uh, I, I really commend this conversation you're having and, and encourage you to, uh, to orient that person on how things function here, on what your expectations are, and to uh, even for these eight um, uh, competencies to order them in, in what you want to see uh, emphasized first. And then as that superintendent grows in capacity, you add more and more in. Mm. Yeah, you could, you could have a kind of Bloom's taxonomy here. <laughs> like there's right. a yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and it is worth noting as we've done the policy work, we anytime in the policy where it says the superintendent shall, or the superintendent or their designee shall, we've been flagging that and saying, hey, that's another one for the enumerated duties document. And it's all over the policies. And, 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 and you know, the degree to which anyone, any one person fully understands every place throughout the documents where it says that, um, like we, we need to do a little sort of user experience work to, to improve that. And then to look at the, the entire body to see the forest for the trees and say, hey, maybe maybe a few of these are just silly. A few of these things we need to you know, figure out another way to get it done um, because it's, it's, not, you know, it's not possible to, to do it. Okay, all right, um, good. Thank you, I mean, thanks for the, for the dialogue. And um, as I said, you know, the, the intent is that this is just the sort of beginning beginning of this. 
the, the last thing, and I, I think this all sort of closes out on the theme of sort of communication and, and sort of the, you know, the flow of the sort of routing of, of things. Um, it, it also in our, in our bylaws and, and sort of articulated um, pretty clearly in, uh, in the sort of statutes, uh, you know, sort of related to boards of education in the state, effective school boards engage in ongoing two-way communication with the entire district community communicating district priorities and progress towards achieving them, systematically seeking input from the community. Um, so I think it, it, that sort of wraps where we started, which was sort of on uh, Jeff, you know, on the, on the first item that you called out and sort of the, the ability to reconcile those two things. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, very much appreciate um, sort of that, that call out. Any, any, anyone have any thoughts or anything that you want to touch on here? And, and I'm, I'm really eager to think about, you know, where is the, where is the, the sort of next place where we think we have an, uh, a, um, a meaningful conversation about, you know, sort of where, where we need to, to um, I don't wanna say fix things that are broken, but where we think our biggest pain points are, where we think whether it's the pain we're causing for central office, our teachers, our building leaders or ourselves. Um, Devin, did you have something? Yeah. I will say, I think a lot, and we've had this conversation many times, I think at this board, and I've heard it from folks in the community is our websites are just so challenging to navigate. Yeah. Um, finding board minutes, finding um, when board meetings are, if folks don't know to sign up for the alert from the town, they don't get notices. Yep. And so, and just like things are outdated, policy, you know, you click on to find a school list and it's really hard to find. So. I think a lot of our challenges, and I think we have a great person. I'm so excited about Sierra Sersani. I met her um, on Friday. Mm -hmm. She's just, you know, uh, exudes energy and enthusiasm, and I think will bring a lot to our community and district. Um, but just thinking really strategic about communication, because I do think that creates a lot of angst when people can't find the answers, and unfortunately, right. sometimes they assume the worst, right? And so, right. We, um, we've had Freedom of Information I, yeah. Act requests because people have said, you don't, you know, you don't have this or you haven't posted this. And then I've gone and found it, you know, if it's a committee that was once set up under region nine, and now it's a joint committee of all three boards, it's like, oh, you got to go to their website and then click down here. And it, it I completely agree. If, if we could overhaul the websites, uh, it could make a huge difference to making sure that the community understands sort of the work, the good work that's going on already. Um, yeah, Jeff, please. I uh I think there's also an issue as it relates to social social media yeah. and our participation in that, and um, especially if we uh, if we uh, present ourselves as uh, board members in those uh, in those discussions, I think it I think it could lead to a lot of misunderstanding. I know we have a policy uh, on that topic, so that if you are if you if you go online and <laughs> And you're, and you're a big and you're a big dog who, who's angry at something but um but seamless if, metaphor and but just... yes, if you now if you go on as 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 citizen jeff jeff parker that is one thing but if you go on as citizen as as, as board member jeff parker that right. is an entirely different circumstance yep yeah agreed um yeah and and if if there's anything um i mean honestly if if I'm doing anything, I hope that any anyone will throw a flag because I'm certainly I certainly don't mean to do that if I am, and um, you know I would hope we can all be open and um, sort of honest with each other and just say, hey, I think maybe this thing was out of bounds, and you know I, I don't think anybody is is uh, you know intentionally uh, crossing the line. Um, okay, good. Any anybody else have anything? Uh, I think those those are by the way two fabulous pain points to focus on and, and think about how we can uh, help uh, make those, you know, make that a priority. Um, any, any, anything else that we want to make sure that we bring into the conversation for, for next round. Okay. All right. Well, then we will uh, move on to uh, agenda item six, which is uh, our closing uh, public comment again. Um, if members of the uh, public 
uh, would like to make comment, um, please raise your hand using, I see Patrick has raised his hand, uh, using the um, raise hand function in the participants window. Um, and we'll just give everyone a moment uh, to raise their hand. And uh, Patrick, you should be able to unmute. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. Is my is my camera gonna go on? We can if you if you if you'd like. Oh, uh, it's okay. We'll leave it off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know the audio can get choppy there, but you can hear me okay. We can hear you just fine. Okay. If you uh, could just say you. your full name, street, and town. Yes, uh, my full name is Patrick Duplessis. D U P L E S S I S. I live at uh, eleven Tursana Drive in Easton. Uh, this is my first meeting. I've lived in town for. A total of 12 days. <laughs> I've gotten to know some of you already. Um, so I thought I had two minutes, but apparently I, get, I have three minutes. Um, so I raised my hand because uh, I was somewhat uh, shocked to see that the agenda for this meeting had no mention of the topics raised in uh, the superintendent's August 13th email about the reopening plan and mask mandates. Um, I, th I think the issues in that email are in, especially the issue of, of mask mandates in the elementary school classrooms are by far the most important issues facing the school district. And they really need urgent discussion with parents. Uh, I'd emailed uh, to ask if these issues could be ad added to the agenda for today's meeting. And the answer I got basically was no. Um, I don't know if I get to make motions here, but I'm gonna go ahead and make one anyways. Uh, I wanna move the school board to urgently schedule and notice a public meeting so parents may ask questions and hear answers about uh, the reopening plans and especially the mask requirements for students at the elementary school. Uh, my big concern is that the August 13th email uh, basically misstates the law with respect to mask mandates. And uh, without correction, this board and the teachers and the principals uh, whose job is to implement and enforce these mask requirements uh, are gonna be doing so basically based on an incorrect understanding of the law. Uh, and we also risk having parents uh, mistakenly believe that their child is required to wear a mask when in fact they don't need to. Uh, the governor's order uh, 13A, we've mentioned a few times tonight, uh, it, de it defines a few incredibly broad categories for whom, uh, uh, categories of people, I should say, for, for whom the mask mandate is just not applicable. Uh, parents deserve to know what steps have been taken or will be taken to identify the students who fall into these categories. Uh, parents should understand that arguably every student at the elementary school is exempt due to the behavioral conditions inherent in being a young child. Uh, from what I've heard tonight, it sounds like no one here doubts that mask mandates in classrooms pose risks of harm to these young children. But are these risks being addressed by the, the school's reopening plans? At the moment, I don't think anybody knows, and we weren't even allowed to ask tonight because it was not on the agenda. Uh, so again, I, I think a public discussion on these topics needs to occur uh, very soon, as soon as possible. Um, so again, I'll, I'll move the school board to urgently schedule and notice a public meeting so parents uh, can ask questions and hear answers on these important issues before this, the first day of school, September 1st. And I agree with uh, the, the recent comments that it is incredibly hard to figure out when these meetings are. Uh, so on a meeting of this level of importance, I, I would expect many parents uh, would attend, uh, even if it's virtual, um, but, uh, it's, it's just simply difficult to, to find out when these meetings are. There's a lot of them. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just checking the participants window. Okay, seeing no uh, further public comment, we'll move to board member comment. Uh, Devin. So first, I just want to thank um, Dr. McMorrin and Dr. Pearson Ugal for what I have found to be very um, clear and um, helpful information but as a parent, as a board member about kind of the evolving state of dealing with a pandemic that unfortunately has changed and has changed the way that 
I think educators and have had to respond and to keep our kids safe uh, physically, socially, emotionally. So I really do appreciate um, the communication, knowing that um, in, in Connecticut in particular, you guys were waiting for kind of the Department of Health and the governor to put out new guidance before you got ahead of that. So, so thank you for the timely, um, the timely manner in which you put out that information. Um, I just want to be, you know, careful. I think one of the reasons we haven't discussed mask mandates is it's not up to this board to make that decision. Um, and, it, and it's something that I think people have really passionate feelings about. And so putting it to discussion in this board could give people a false hope that this board is going to make a decision on that when it's right now up to the governor and up to um, the state. And they are following, you know, CDC and American Academy of Pediatrics guidelines. Um, and so, you know, again, I, I, I don't think anybody, at least on, on my side, is intentionally trying, and I know the folks on this board and respect them greatly, um, that no one is trying to not talk about something. It's just, we, it doesn't, we don't have a say in this because it's something that is um, given to us by the state um, and the state is doing their best to follow health guidelines to keep our children safe. So thank you, John. Thank you, Devin. Any additional board member comment? John, I just I'll make a quick one in, in deference to uh, Mr. Duplessis comments, you know, uh, the the board is always open to receive emails. These meetings are a challenging spot to have a dialogue with the community. It's near impossible. Um, don't go away frustrated. Um, I sat in your shoes, you know, 10, 15 years ago when I first started going to these and uh, I left most meetings scratching my head. So. Um, but the, the, the email exchanges with board members, the dialogue can occur. Um, so I encourage every, all the public to do that. And many of them do, uh, you know, Patrick's new to town. So uh, we invite him, all the board members invite him to have a dialogue, you know, after these meetings, so. Thank you, Randy. Any additional uh, board member comments? Okay. Seeing none, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Randy. Do I have a second? Thank you, Jeff. Uh, there is actually a, a phrase I can use now, and I never can remember it. Sorry, I'm just going to have to look everyone uh, <laughs> all in favor. <laughs> Aye. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. We are adjourned at 8.04 p.m. Good night. Thanks, John. Thanks, all. Thank you. All right. Have a good night.